And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone unto his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day as we celebrate our Lord and Savior's birth, as we look to who he is, the Prince of Peace, may we find that peace today. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we come to another Christmas. And if you have been around for very long, they keep coming quicker and quicker and quicker. Do they not? This whole section over here doesn't understand that, but everybody else does, I think. And uh, as we look around us in our lives, in the lives of our neighbors, our community, our country, our world, there is an overarching need. We see unrest. We see turmoil, division on nearly every topic. There are forces that are intentionally attempting to segment us by groups, classes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this year we've been presented with war and needless bloodshed. And our hearts cry out for peace. We want peace. And as we come to Christmas to get a glimpse of the only person who can provide true peace, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. We find ourselves in Isaiah, familiar verses for Christmas, chapter 9, Verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And listen to his names. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Five titles given there. Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And each of those is worth exploring in its own, but today I want us to focus on that last one, the Prince of Peace. And we see today here first the Prince of Peace revealed in our lives. The Prince of Peace needs to be revealed in our lives. The first thing we need to realize as we come to church today and as we live our lives that there is no true peace outside of Jesus Christ. Man will sign treaties. Man will have peace accords. But outside of the author of peace, Jesus Christ, they're really just moments of rest. Moments of rest in the hostility because the cause of unrest the cause of war is sin, the sin of mankind. 
the sin that lies in each and every one of us, the pride of life that we have. And Jesus is the only one that brings peace. Now, how does He do that? Well, we see it in three ways. He brought peace at birth. We've just read the Christmas account out of out of Luke chapter 2. You'll find it in Matthew 1 and 2 as well. But in Luke 2.14, when the angels came, the last verse that Brother Rick uh, spoke there, the, angels, the angel came with a multitude of hosts with him, and they were speaking of Jesus to the shepherds. They say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Peace entered the world at the exact time He was expected. Jesus is peace. And He entered the world at the exact time that He was needed. Galatians tells us, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent his, forth His Son. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son. The empires that came and went the hand of God moving with His sovereignty across the world, all the prophecies, all the empires being arranged for the rise and fall for the specific moment in time when Jesus Christ would come. Peace entered the world so that we could see it. So He came in His birth. And we see also in Jesus' life. He came in His life as well. In Jesus' life, we experienced Now, His words of peace, as He spoke, as we have recorded in the Gospels, the sermons, the the words that He expressed to those around Him. But more than just His words, we also saw His way of peace. How He treated folks. How He cared for them. How He lifted them up. There was a world of chaos around Jesus Christ. And in the midst of that chaos, all He did was bring peace everywhere He went. He brought peace to those that were willing to see it. And today, Jesus Christ brings peace to us if we are willing to see it and willing to accept it as well. We look and we remember Jesus sleeping in a boat in the midst of a storm. And His his disciples are terrified and He wakes. He's able to sleep because He's peacefully sleeping there. And He wakes and He calms the storm. And He gives peace over that situation. We see as He brought physical peace to hundreds upon hundreds that He healed with where they were in their life. He brought spiritual and mental peace to those that were possessed with demons and they had caught their grip of their life and He gave them peace by removing them. He brought peace to families. Three specifically that had, had folks that had died in their family that He brought those folks back to life. But most importantly, He spoke peace to those that were held by their sin. And when He did that often, He would tell them after they were healed to go in peace. He has healed us. If we will listen and if we will see Him, who is He? He is peace. He is the Savior of the world. We, we represent it on Christmas Day. Who knows when the real day was? But it is represented in what Jesus Christ came to do, bringing peace in His birth and in His life, in a world of chaos. I ask you today, is your world chaos? The things going on around you, does it just feel like everything is just maddening sometimes? Maybe there's some family issues that are going on. Some physical issue. Some financial issue in your life. He's there for us today. There is peace available from the Lord as we rest in Him. We know that because He is the one that is in control. And He tells His disciples and He speaks to us as well in John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you. Why? That in me ye might have peace. Doesn't that sound good? That ye might have peace. Following His words to bring peace, He tells them, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. He gave them peace in His birth, 
and his life. And finally, for us today, the ultimate peace came in Jesus' death. In Jesus' death, in Colossians 1.20, he says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Let me repeat that. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. We sometimes separate Easter from Christmas a little too far. The purpose of the birth of Jesus Christ was for this ultimate purpose, for him to reconcile us through his blood on the cross. Friends, it all sprouts from this realization that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Through His shed blood on the cross, He was born bringing a glimmer of that peace to mankind. He lived demonstrating peace and providing it in His words. But He sealed our peace. He sealed our peace today by His death for our sin, for your sin today. He reconciled us to Himself. His death and resurrection destroyed our sin that was preventing us from being able to have peace in our life. And on this Christmas Eve, I have to ask the question, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you have that peace in your life? He provides you with a peace that no one else can give and that no one else can take away. And there is no greater gift that anyone can give you on this Christmas than Jesus Christ. He tells us in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The ultimate gift. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, I encourage you to do that today. Allow that peace to come to your life. Call out to Him, realizing your sin. Realizing your sin has separated you from God and believe that Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin. Confess Jesus Christ as Savior. The peace that God brings as the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace is revealed in our lives and the results in our salvation, but How about for those of us that have been Christians for a while? How about that? How about after salvation? Well, the Lord's not finished because we see also, because of this, the the Prince of Peace is reigning in our lives as well. He needs to reign in our lives. In in the personal life of a Christian, He needs to reign in our life. If you turn to Colossians 3.15. Colossians 3.15 It tells us there, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Now Christians, don't turn me off, please. Ah, it's just another Christmas message. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know the Christmas account, all that. Don't do that this morning. Is the Prince of Peace ruling in your life? He brought peace to your life at salvation. But are you allowing the chaos of this world to seep back in? Have you ever done that? Guilty? Sure. Have you permitted him to the the chaos to sort of take back control? Now, I'm not saying that chaos isn't around you. That's going to happen. But peace came when you accepted Jesus Christ. May peace remains in our daily life only when we enthrone Him as the Prince of Peace in our life. He has to take that spot as Lord in our life. And Jesus becomes the, when we do that, He becomes the authority in our life. And when He's enthroned, He becomes the authority in our life and His Holy Spirit begins to guide us. And the Lord didn't just want to reconcile you to salvation, He wants to extend that peace to all areas of your life. Aren't we glad? That's a wonderful thing. 
It would have been enough. It was just incredible that he just saved us alone. But more than that, he loves us so much that he wants to be the prince in all areas of your life, to extend that peace to every area, your home, your work, your community, your, your personal struggles, your work, whatever it is. The Lord wants to be there, and he wants to help you and extend that peace along in your life. And as we enthrone the Lord in our daily walk, it starts to change our life. It engaged in we, when we're meeting with Him, when we open the Word of God on a daily basis and allow the Holy Spirit to open and enlighten His Word to us, when we begin to listen to His leading, and slowly but surely the Holy Spirit begins to produce the fruit of the Spirit in our life. What are those? Love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The peace grows. And it's in all areas of our life. And then it extends itself into the church. The general life of the church, not just our personal life. Because the rest of that verse said, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which that ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Christians of peace become a church body of peace. It soothes the conflicts. It gives grace to others. Ephesians 4.3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Peace in our life creates unity. Unity creates harmony. And harmony allows us, the church, to fulfill the functions of what He's called us to do. We sing the, the hymn often called, Oh, How Good It Is. The first verse reads, Oh, how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit, in faith, in unity, where the bonds of peace, of acceptance, and love are the fruit of, the pre- of His presence here among us. May we strive for that in our lives. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called, the four listed, and then the last, the Prince of Peace. Then the next verse. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. What type of government? The Prince of Peace brings peace. Makes sense. It's in the name. But it will have no end. That's the government of what He wants to bring in our lives. As I pondered this the, through this week, uh, different verses came to mind. And the Christmas carol, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Take your hymnal in front of you if you'd like. Page 267. The third and fourth verse spell it out. This is the first, the, the, the first verse I'll read is the verse that is our world today. The next one is the verse that the Prince of Peace brings us. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song. Of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. Why? For Christ is here, his spirit near, brings peace on earth, goodwill to men. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Amen. Let us pray. Friend, do you have peace today in your life?
you might question everything about God, but you know the world around you has no peace. The Christians you know, you see something different in them. There is a peace in their life. And it only comes through Jesus Christ. Today is not a day about a little child, just a little baby, just something so cute. It is about our Lord and Savior being born to take the penalty of our sin on his life to bring peace to each of us individually as we accept him as our Savior. If you have not done that, I encourage you today to cry out to the Lord. Ask him to save you, and he will bring you peace. For those of us that are Christians, have we allowed him to be that peace? Or have we taken that back and thrown him in your life today? Allow him to bring that peace in every area. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, as we come today, heard your word that you would apply it in our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, if there are any that don't know Christ today as their Savior, that you would draw them to you, that they would cry out to you and accept Christ now today. Be with us as Christians today, today as well, dear Heavenly Father, that we would look in our hearts and we would seek you, allow you to be who you want to be in our lives. And in this church as well, in Jesus' name, amen.